Hi, this is Kirk with Forex Strategy Secrets. Is what we're wanting to do today is we go through some strategies that we have in the scanner. We have some that would have been good solid uh, strategies and they're still there. And we use those, but we've added some uh, additional ones for different types of trading, for longer term trading, shorter term trading. And so I'll be going through different concepts on some of the uh, strategies that, uh, that we have. The time frame I want to use right now to start off with is the one hour time frame. Now it's what I'm going to be looking for is cross of the filter. This is a filter indicator that comes with a scanner and I'm looking for the cross of the zero line on that filter. That's the first thing that I look for. Then the next thing that I look for is is it a four bar meaning are there one two three four indicators all the buy color or all the sell color. Uh, if I refer to this black color as blue, I, I put it, you can change the color if you have the filter to whatever color you want. I like it black, so I just it lets me know that's the filter. It's totally uh, different than the others. And um, I'm looking for the cross. Okay, right here would be the heads up on that one hour time frame. This is having to be a great big one, but we'll go look at a, a bunch of others as well. And then you would look at the 30 minute. And so you're looking there at a four bar as well. And so that would be where you'd get the scan, would give you a heads up on that move that was 60 some odd pips. Now let's go back a little bit more. And I'm just looking at, notice I'm just looking where this crossed the zero line. Is that a four bar? Yes, it is. So it's set up, so that's the criteria. Then we look for this 30 minute. Does it have a four bar? Yes, it did. Now if we give a heads up, there's a place to enter a trade and you can see that uh, there was a place to, to trade. So look at this area. You may have uh, said, well, I want to get in and I may want to be out right here. Just one quick thing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this concept, but look at the larger time frame. You possibly could have stayed in that trade the whole time using the larger time frame, but even though it did do a little bit of retracement right here. Uh, so sometimes you might enter on a, a time frame, but you might manage on the uh, time frame just larger than that. So this was just during one day. This was just uh, yesterday. Let's see, is there something on today's movement? Okay, right there it crossed above. And then we go to the 30 minute. It was a four bar as well, so you could have entered there. It didn't really move much for a few hours, and then all of a sudden it uh, had a nice move. And let's say we'd managed it on the one hour, you would just be closing it. Let's see, it only made 13 pips, even though it, it did go um, about 40 pips. So the different management uh, styles, okay. One other way you can manage it is when it changed colors. Well, if you entered there and the filter changed colors, well, there wasn't uh, a lot of pips there. So sometimes the first color change is not the best, but after it's gone a while, then you say, okay, it changed back to red right up here. So then you would have received a few more pips. So that's just on that one today. Let's just look, I'm gonna scroll through a couple of these. See, this one has been moving steadily up but it has had a couple of periods where it uh, was fresh going across. And you can see that many times that's a place where the market took off. And then it came back and then hesitated right in that area, but then it took off again. Another four bar and there was a, another 20 some odd pips, pound US. This went below uh, right there. Now this one is okay because one of the strategies has to be a four bar the other one just has to be an early bird filter. It's the same color here, same color there. So those two the same color and the filter is the same color. This uh, trend indicator does not have to be uh, the color to give you a signal. So that's on the one hour. Now let's go to the 30 minutes, see if it agreed. Uh, it agreed at that spot. So someplace in there would have been a place you would have received a, a scan to uh, take the trade. Now let's look at different management uh, uh, techniques. We, if we managed it on this 30 minute, this is where it would have suggested that we 
maybe exit the trade and the one hour uh, pretty much the same same bar it's 40 40 some odd pips in that trade right there just using that uh, as your management technique now notice right here where it's really choppy let's just look at some of these uh, this one went across well that's not a four bar uh, it did uh, it, well, it's only two of the bars of the same color, and we're looking for this is uh, right right there. It did go across, but they're not the same color, so we don't have anything else going on until right here when it crossed back to the direction. Okay, there is a heads up. It crossed four bar. Now we look to 30 minutes, see if there's a, a trade there to be had. Right there, it's not a four bar. Um, but that is a signal you could have taken that one because there is one that's an early bird filter but it only moved 20 pips and so not every trade is going to be a gigantic trade but they're high probability trades if you'd lost on that it would have been very little if you're taking it up here uh, you know it didn't go very much uh, against you before then it took off again here's another entry signal right here and you can see that that, that was a, a nice move so let's just scroll through another one. Uh, right in here was a four bar, possibly a heads up right in there. Of course, then that was a big news move there for 100 pips. Comes back down the other direction. Right here was another heads up to get you all warmed up. So when I show you the big stuff, you're going to uh, see, wow, I'm showing you a concept now. Yes, make steady pips. And you can trade the smaller time frames. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like on the these two strategies, the ones that I've been talking about. I'm not going to go into detail on them, but I've been talking mainly about this one hour time frame. Notice that I have checked here the day and the four hour and the four hour and the one hour. So I have some larger time frames checked. These two strategies are only dealing with two time frames. This top grouping deals with three: the 30, 15, and 5 one um, well this is only two and this is three and this is three and then there's a, a bottom one right here that uh, deals with three as well this is for the Asian session and there's a specific training that has to be uh, taken with that to really understand how to use it but uh, what I want to talk about now is two time frames larger time frames as a dashboard that's where you do your management of your uh, attaching your scans to currency pairs uh, you can take them on and off it's very uh, easy to do so now let's move from the one hour as the larger time frame to the four hour as the larger time frame we're going to use the same concept we're not having to change the way we trade we just look at the indicators we just trade change in our mind how long it takes so this one you get a signal right there it crossed this was an early bird filter that's a good heads up and then we go to the one hour it was a four, a four bar it only had to be an early bird filter but it was a four bar and so there was a, a trade now before we were looking at 20 40 50 pips now that now we're going to start looking at hundreds of pips in some of these moves that was a move going up that was a move coming down and four bar you would have received a scan right in here that was the beginning of the European session and that went 100 pips so that's what I'm getting at here now look at that that's not really that big of an area that's just a, a consolidation area you get in areas like this at 140 pips there is a scan that would have given you a heads up there's 300 pips in that so that's what I'm saying suggesting now is don't be afraid to use larger time frames you set your stop out a little bit further and manage it you don't have to be there you just come back once uh, an hour possibly or once every four hours and take a look at it so you would have received a signal 
this hour or the following hour, someplace right in this area, that hey, there's possibly a trade there. You come back four hours later and you're already starting to make some pips, and you come back the next day and you're starting to make more pips. Now, what are we looking for as an exit? We can do right here. What if we use that as an exit signal? Well, that was only 250 pips. Okay, one currency pair. Uh, it did go over into a, uh, a cover it looked two days. Uh, this is a one hour chart, and each of these vertical lines is one day. So the afternoon of one to the morning of another. Now, think about this for a minute. You put, if you're trading four hour time frames, you can have four or five trades on at one time because they're going to last a day or two, this swing trading. And now let's to take it from uh, 20, 30 pips a day to now you, you look at per week because you may not close anything for a day. Maybe the next day you close and you make 200 pips the next day because you closed two trades that each went uh, uh, 100 pips or two trades that went 50 pips for 100 pips for the two days. Now, times that by maybe 10 pairs you're trading. Maybe you want to trade more pairs, but you can only take so many trades at a time before you run out of your, you overtrade your account. So you keep your account reasonable and take, uh, if you have 10 trades, the maximum on, uh, that you can have on, but you have four to five on most of the time. And throughout the course of a week, you're, you're closing some of those trades. And they average, I'm just going to use a, a round number of 100 pips a piece, five, six trades, you're looking at 500 plus pips per week. Now, that can make you a lot of money, and you can still make a lot of money using the smaller uh, pips and using larger lot sizes. So, we've talked about smaller time frames, larger lot sizes, or larger time frames, you adjust the lot size to whatever fits your uh, account's ability to handle it and your skill level to handle it. This, this principle, you may have a loss, but out of four trades, you're not going to have uh, very many losses. You might have one, possibly two, 50%, 50-50. But your losses should be very small, and your wins should be a lot larger. So you'd still make money at a 50-50, but generally you'll probably be closer to a 70-80 pip, uh, I mean 80% win-loss ratio if you use this strategy of making sure that everything's going in the right direction and this filter indicator is going across the zero line. That's really a, a key factor in making this uh, this concept work. Now I'm going to show you a couple of instances. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you one that I took is using the larger time frames. Okay, this was a, a four hour time frame right here that I, I got the signal, took the trade, and that's where I closed it for about 90, I think it was, it looks like 93, but it was 92 pips. And one, two, three, four, five. That was 20 hours that uh, that trade was open and uh, made 90 pips on one currency pair. Now that's what I want to do to show you, see if there's any other trades that could have been taken or you could have been in at that time frame. I'm just going to look between these two lines here or uh, right in that general area. Let's look at some other pound pairs, see what they've been moving. Uh, that one moving a little bit, that one not so much. Uh, that one possibly, you would, you would have received a signal maybe earlier, and that was 50 pips. Uh, there's one, not one, there's not one there. That's the one we took, go to the Euro New Zealand. So, so here's another one you may have been in starting from over here, and that was 50 pips. And maybe another one right there. That's 70, depends on how you manage that, 70 to 50 to 70 pips on that one. So yes, there were several trades right here, the same time frame, same area that you could have been trading using the four hour and the one hour. Now, you can use the day and the four hour, and it will give you a, a similar type of uh, move. If whenever the new day bar forms, take a look at it. If it matches up, then you go to the four hour. If it matches up, take the trade. It'll make sure you leave enough room for the 
uh, drawdown. So that's a trade that I took. Now I'm going to show you some other trades. Here was the trade. This was a, uh, a four hour time frame. You see the fresh cross right here. Um, then we you know, scroll down. Here's the one hour. And there was a four bar right there. A little bit of retracement, but that was a nice trade right there. And this is the euro pound. Now I'm going to show you. This is all those slides I just showed you, but they're all together now. There's 48 pips on this trade. And this happened to be in a one um, four hour period of time that that was uh, taken. So that didn't uh, last very long for 48 pips. Well, in the euro pound, you make a lot of, a lot of money per pip as it moves. Uh, it's more than the others. But it looks like on each of the different time frames uh, taking that trade. Okay, this is the um, pound CAD. You notice this one is on a, a four hour bar also. Uh, so some of them move pretty quick, but the signal is still the same. It uh, went across there, a good signal. This one is 90 pips that was made on this particular trade. And here's the uh, 30 minute time frame. So you can see that uh, uh, once you, there were some other management things you could have closed it out here, but 90 pips is 90 pips. Take your pips and, and go. Uh, so that's a couple of trades there. There was another trade this individual took that was also in the 90s. So that same period of time, he had two trades, a 90, a 90, and a 48, or around a 250. And so that's what can be done by using the larger time frames. Uh, you don't have to just sit on the smaller time frames. On a, if you use the 15 and 5, what do you think would be the number of pips you might want to shoot for there? What are we looking for? We're looking for the same thing we were looking for before, a fresh cross right there. So let's put that line there. Then what are we looking for? This one happened to be a four bar. They don't all have to be four bars, but that one happens to be a four bar. And then we go to the five minute. That was a four bar. So someplace up in here, it said that the boss can take a trade. Now it's for 30 pips. That's a big one on the 15 and five. Let's take some that you're going to have to be careful with uh, right here. Now, why do I say careful? You know, if you've had our course material, you know that we talk about a braided pattern. That's when the, these two hotlines or moving averages are intertwined with the price bars. So this was in a braided pattern, and you did get the signals. But let's see whether you would have wanted to take it based on this five minute. It was a. It wasn't a four bar there. We had to wait one five minute period before it became a four bar. Six pips, ten pips, and then it comes back against you and does some things. Then it actually went negative against you if you'd stayed in that trade. Let's go back to the 15 minute so you can see how choppy it got. So if you'd entered over here someplace, there's that 15 pips where it dropped against you. Well, right here, there's another signal, and that one went up 30 some odd pips uh, again. So you have to be careful. The smaller time frames are going to get really choppy. And not have much of a move, so you got to be really uh, quick to to. If it starts going back on, you get close your your trade. So be very cautious. Now I'm going to mark this area, and say if you want to trade those smaller time frames, then look at the bigger time frame for confirmation. See what's kind of taking place in here. See it's it's kind of starting to turn at that point where that line is, and here's what the one hour looks like. And so even the one hour was easier to trade than the 15 minute. And then you got a, a nice move. And this is where the big move happened on the one hour time frame. So the one hour still is easier to trade than the smaller time frame. So don't get caught up in it. Well, I have to have these smaller time frames so that I can get into the trade and, and, and uh, make a lot of pips. Well, not necessarily. You may not make a lot of pips using the smaller time frames as many as you could do in the larger time frames. I talked about four bars. I talked about fresh crosses and two time frames. That was the main emphasis on this particular uh, session. Sometimes we're talking about three time frames and talking about some different setups. 
but that's how simple it can be. You notice that every time we had a fresh cross on the filter, uh, it's either going sideways like this, and it was hard to trade, or you had your big moves. This is like a one hour chart. Yeah, this move, this move. So we look right here, fresh cross, big move, fresh cross, big move. This is a corrective move. You can tell by this other indicator here that if it's going long and it's below the zero line, that's a corrective move there. And so you want to have, if this is below the zero line, you want to, you'll have a higher probability chance of making better trades if you're trading going short. So that's uh, one of the things that we have there. So just be aware of all those kind of things. That's why you need the course material to, to be aware of these little um, points of interest that would make all the, all the difference.